It's 7 p.m. on Monday, the 20th of May, 1991. I'm Rodney Crouch, and I've come to Stansted Church to witness the beginning of a very historic event. Well, what is going to happen this evening is we're going to take out the oldest bell uh, in the church, which uh, dates from between uh, 1418 and 1440. It's going to be lowered 30 feet uh, out of the tower, and then we're going to put it on a trailer, which has been loaned to us by the uh, Royal Artillery at Woolwich, and then it will be put in under cover for uh, our carnival event on Sunday the 9th of June. And where is it going on the 9th of June? It will, we will start from here, and uh, it will go the full 25 miles by road, effectively up the A20, uh, in six separate stages, uh, all the way to Whitechapel Bell Foundry in Whitechapel Road. Now, you've got a very large number of people who you hope are going to accompany the bell. That's, right. uh, that's obviously for fundraising reasons, but also for security reasons, because I gather that on some previous occasion, a bell went missing, didn't it? Well, that's right, Rodney, yes. In fact, not here, but in the neighbouring parish at uh, Trosley. Uh, the story goes that uh, in around 1750, um, one of the church wardens uh, volunteered to take one of their three bells uh, down and back to Whitechapel Foundry. It was cracked, it needed recasting. So the bell was lowered down, uh, put on a, his pony and trap. He, the bell, and the uh, pony and trap set off and were never seen again. Well, we sincerely <laughs> hope that doesn't happen in this particular case. Well, I can hear some ringing going on inside the tower as indeed they're beginning to, to move the bell from its cradle. Let's go inside and see what's right, happening. Let's do that. Tom, explain to me, please, what is going to happen to it at Whitechapel? It's going to be re-tuned, and the crown will be um, drilled out, uh, together, in fact, with the other two bells that are in the tower. And at the same time, they're going to be casting uh, three new bells, uh, so that we will, at the end of the day, have a full six-bell peel. And what is all that going to cost? Uh, about £45,000. But the, the initiative for this has come from an anonymous benefactor uh, who's pledged £25,000 uh, towards uh, the whole cost. So you need another £20,000. How right. are you going to raise it? Well, principally through this Bellpool Carnival. I mean, every, we've got so far 200 uh, walkers. Uh, they are all being sponsored in varying amounts. And uh, we hope perhaps that, that one event will raise perhaps uh, £10,000. Missed his legs up for him. Watch out, mind the After all that hard work, it's time for a pint for the men from the Kent County Association of Change Ringers. It's now 6 a.m. on Sunday the 9th of June. At that time of the day, two people might be called a crowd, but listening to Gordon and Vicky Hunt are gathering their fellow parishioners and friends who will walk with the bell for the first stage of its 25-mile journey. But first, there are speeches from the vicar, Reverend David Clark, the Bishop of Rochester, 
and the Mayor of Tunbridge. The Walkers receive a blessing from Bishop Michael. And there's a presentation of commemorative scrolls for both the bishops and the mayor. Then it's time for the photographs and an unplanned moment of comedy. Ready? Neville Phillips, Ready who's organized the whole undertaking, begins the countdown and we're off. From here to the first stop, it's six miles, giving the camera crew time to find out what the scrolls contain and how the bishops feel about getting up so early. What does it say? This says it's been presented to me on the occasion of St. Mary Stansard Bellpool, Sunday the 9th of June 1991, and signed and sealed by, by the rector. A very impressive document, actually. Yeah. Why did you make this personal sacrifice to get up so early to be here this morning? Well, getting up at five o'clock on a June morning is a joy rather than a sacrifice, isn't it? And uh, it, I thought the cause was excellent. Uh, and I'm very impressed that uh, 200 people have equally got up early and are walking 25 miles, which I'm not. I'm very pleased to have been asked. It's been lovely. The sun's come out at the right moment. And uh, it's beautiful. I mean, it's lovely to be here. I, I mean, I was just looking around and thinking that this valley must be almost exactly the same as it was uh, when the, all these costumes were, um, uh, were contemporary. But what's so impressive about today is that this is just an imaginative community uh, exercise and I guess there are lots of people here who appreciate the bells and uh, they become a very part of an important part of village and community life. And uh, so it's not just the, uh, the immediate churchgoers who are, who are involved in this, but the whole community. And that must be good. Nothing I've ever seen has been such an evocation of the spirit of Christian pilgrimage as the scene among these fields of Kent. Here, for a moment, is somehow materialized the faith, the commitment, and the dedication of generations of believers. Now the first six miles are done and we're at Farningham with thoughts only of breakfast. The next stage takes us from Farnham to Swanley, just three miles. Barely time enough for Noel Acheson Gray to set up his checkpoint with Marco Gandolfo at St Mary's Church. I think it's been a tremendous response from the Stansted parishioners, and uh, everybody has done very well with sponsorship. Here we're joined by Jazz Unlimited for the next leg, the four miles to Sidcup, which takes us past Ruxley Manor and Ruxley Corner. The narrow and crowded street outside the Church of St John the Evangelist almost defeats the bus which provides a constant shuttle service between the stages. 
13 miles are passed and here there's a welcome opportunity to sit for lunch. The mayor of Bexley hasn't had to rise as early as some but he's in no doubt about the valour of those who have. May I, on behalf of all the people in the bar, welcome you into the London Bar of Bexley. We do really think that this is a magnificent undertaking that you people have um, done today uh, to bring your bell from such a lovely old church way back in one of the lovely villages of Kent to take it to London so that it can be repaired and renewed and so that its life will continue the way it has over all the centuries. I think that is an absolute marvellous undertaking that you are doing today. Thank you very much indeed. I wish you Godspeed and every success in your endeavour. Thank you very much indeed. The crowd in, in Greenwich Park will lift it. Uh, I think we um, we'll we'll do that it. if it kills us, you know, that last bit. <laughs> <laughs> The next, the next section is going to be difficult. We know that one or two traffic hazards on the way and we're well aware of them. Each, each individual has walked their section so that they're well aware of where we are going and they're very conscious of the problems that are before them. So that's good from everybody's point of view. But we'll take it slowly and easily and look forward to the next section. On our route so far, we've been the centre of attention from passers-by, but here, not even a frivolous call to the umpire disturbs the tranquility of this match. Elton, and we're tangling with the Sunday traffic, impatient to get to their urgent leisure pursuits. The bells of St John's Church are ringing in our honour at this sub-stage of the route. There's a welcome moment to rest weary feet and take a refreshing drink. At this urban bus stop, it's probably here more than anywhere else along the route that the medieval costumes strike the greatest note of contrast with the modern world. Kidbrook. The Hall of St James's Church, 19 miles gone. The leg from here to Greenwich takes us across a windswept black heath. Before we plunge down the hillside of Greenwich Park. This weekend, Greenwich Festival is underway and we seem to fit quite naturally into the celebrations alongside Cutty Sark. The Mayor of Greenwich has a word or two to say and then it's time to launch balloons to find a winner for the prize of 1,000 air miles. From here, we can look across the river to the Isle of Dogs, our next port of call. And so it's down and under. Where we came from in uh, in Tasmania, there's a uh, we've had a church bell sent to the same foundry and uh, ordered 17 more to suit the tuning of that particular bell to uh, hang in the church of what is uh, known as the Church of Apostles back in Launceston, Tasmania. Thrilled I am. <laughs> I think the whole thing is a wonderful thrilling about the heritage of the bells, which is celebrating the past, the present and the future, which is a wonderful um, event really to be connected with.
I think it's been the most tremendous success, and I can't remember any event we've ever raised, uh, organized in our parish which has brought in so many people of different ideas, ages, you know, it really has been a great success from that point of view. Because we're three separate villages, you see, and uh, we don't always combine in everything we do, or we don't quarrel, but I mean, we don't always combine. And this has brought everybody together, which is jolly for them. Now, with the mayor of Tower Hamlets, the end is in sight, or at least it seems closer. But when eventually the head of the column arrives at Whitechapel Foundry, there's a general feeling that it was further than the three miles promised in the route details. <laughs> which will then be assembled into a new bell frame. We also have to cast three new bells, so that your three come back as six. And how long is all that going to take? Well, the, the bell has arrived somewhat prematurely. We won't actually be starting on work on it for many months, but we should be starting work seriously on the project uh, early in 1992. And delivery when? Oh, here we are. Oh, gosh, I need notice of a question like that. <laughs> But, but once you start in 1992, how long would you expect to take? A project of this kind, we're usually working on the project for something like 12 to 14 weeks. How often do you have people bringing a bell to you in this fashion? I have worked here for 26 years. My father has worked here for a little over 50 years. And neither of us have ever encountered a squad of people quite as mad as you. <laughs> And so the bell called John returns to its place of creation, not to be pensioned off, but to be given a new lease of life. In the fullness of time, it will return to St. Mary the Virgin at Stansted, and with others will proudly peel across this timeless valley in Kent. And to all who had a hand in making that possible, we say, well done, and thank you. <laughs>